I think often we are fearful that we're going to look stupid or something like that, but that's actually how we get to better solutions is by asking. Um, and this also gives us permission to not know. Great. Hi everyone. Um, Good morning. Um, really excited to be here. Uh, um, I'm Allie Littman. Uh, full disclosure, I have COVID right now, so thanks for bearing with me if my um, voice is a little shaky. Uh, uh, so uh, thanks for coming. Uh, I'm going to be speaking today uh, about um, how we're going to imbue strategic thinking into our everyday lives. Um, mastering this is so important to maximizing our impact on the missions we're trying to achieve at our organizations, um, and also just for our own personal growth. I think so often we elevate into our positions and reputations of excellence for being the best doers, but I do believe that you can truly 10x your impact by imbuing this into your everyday, um, into every problem that hits your desk every day. Um, however, this thinking is arguably one of the hardest skill sets to master as there's no real step-by-step -step playbook, but rather a set of frameworks, questions, and subsequent actions that are highly dependent on the context of your situations. So how do you evolve from being the hero of the hour to the hero of the next five years? Um, I'm hoping over the next 45 minutes, we can teach you some skills uh, so you can go forth and, and be that. All right. So I'm gonna take a moment to better introduce myself. Karen uh, gave a bit of an, an intro, um, but once again, I'm Ali Littman. I'm the VP of engineering at Modern Health. Um, I actually studied business at Haas, and most of my engineering knowledge comes from working with engineering, uh, working within engineering and self-study. Um, I've also studied corporate strategy, and I have a background in doing consulting-style work, um, specifically with um, large healthcare institutions. Uh, but both of these things rely on um, strategic thinking to be successful. Um, I think that we're all on a journey uh, for how um, our business success depends on uh, where our business success depends on us being stellar strategic thinkers. Um, I think personally, I started in roles that I would argue had, you know, complexity in the business problems themselves, uh, but didn't require me initially to set strategy for the business or anything like that. Um, but this evolved over time as decisions I needed to make started to impact business goals uh, that we were attempting to reach, as opposed to feeling like I was just doing things to get things done. This also changed when I started needing to influence across teams, across organizations, and across other teams' goals as well, when I became accountable for making decisions. So however, um, if you have the opportunity to make a decision, uh, even at an implementation, implementation or execution level, you likely have an opportunity to be just as strategic as leaders in your organization. No matter where you are at in your career journey, this advice that we're going to go over day, today will be applicable to you. <clears throat> so um, I was originally going to share a personal story and go deep on that, but what's What's I think really interesting about strategic thinking is there's no one size fits all tale that really explains how you do it, right? So um, what I suggest is that you take a moment to pick, pick a strategic business problem relevant to your work and keep that in mind throughout the presentation today um, as we run through all these different frameworks for how to approach it. Um, an example, um, maybe one that I've actually been through myself uh, that you could do, for example, might be how do I scale my engineering organization to grow from one product line to um, five product lines uh, in the span of two years? Uh, Whatever is relevant to you, carry that through the talk today and bump that against uh, some of the questions that we're going to be asking ourselves. Quick overview of the agenda. Uh, so we'll initially talk through some definitions to help you better understand even what strategy is um, and how that fits into the broader business context. We'll talk a bit about systems thinking, um, which is very critical to strategic thinking. Uh, I will walk you through kind of where to get started, what you're going to need as a baseline and what you don't need. That's distracting. Um, then we're going to go into questions uh, to break down strategic problems, and I'll leave you with some tactical parting advice. Questions at the end as well. All right, so starting with approaching strategy as a concept. So 
I really could spend a long time, maybe all day, going deep on definitions uh, that really break apart core business concepts. There might be terms I use today that you're you're very familiar with or less familiar with. Feel free to, to dig in um, later in, in the questions if I don't go deep enough for you. Um, but I'm going to give you a few basic definitions so you can see where strategy fits into the broader business context. So... First off, um, one that you're probably very familiar with is we have a mission. So this is a statement that describes what problem you're setting out to solve. Um, typically, this includes also who you're solving it for. Uh, this is often set at a company level, but you could also set it at lower levels, like at a product um, level, for example. Um, an example of mission could be, you know, create a pathway to easy access to mental health care for all people everywhere. Vision is the next level down of detail from your mission. So this is an idealized solution that addresses the problem you've articulated in your mission. A product vision typically has enough visibility, uh, reliability, sorry, to be relatable, but lacks detail. So for example, um, this could be something like create a digital experience that gives people access to mental health care at no cost for an individual. <clears throat> next, we have um, strategy. So this is the one that's at the core of what we're talking about today. So strategy is a set of principles and decisions that you can commit to ahead of execution uh, to ensure that you're succeeding in your vision. Um, this can evolve uh, over time. It's probably the most flexible uh, of, of these three that you see on the screen. Um, it can evolve as new information arises. Um, so for example, a strategy could be build a custom mobile platform to support employee workforces available in all languages worldwide over the next two years. Um, you know, you could get, as, and as you go, you can build roadmaps and other things that ladder up to this, right? And that's how we get into um, more of maybe what some of us might see on a day-to-day -day -day basis. And I think no matter where you are in your career, you're still thinking about execution, right? Because nothing, none of this can be realized without the right execution. Execution is those day-to-day -day things that um, you might be doing in order to achieve your mission, vision, and strategy. Um, these tactics are very much dictated, though, by what the strategy is. So when you're you know, in a position of potentially doing, you're still thinking strategically in order to influence and realize that strategy. Um, so within this funnel, you know, we see we're going from very broad with starting with the mission all the way down to um, uh, more specifics with the uh, vision strategy and then execution tactics. Um, so just to reiterate, you can still execute on tactics that ladder up to a preset strategy with strategic thinking in mind. Um, so when we talk about strategic thinking today, you know, maybe you are setting that direction, maybe that is part of your role or something you could influence, but also how you think about making decisions at the execution level to ensure they're laddering up is another form of strategic thinking. All right, so now I'm going to get into uh, a little bit more about uh, systems thinking. So to me, systems thinking is a core component of strategic thinking. Um, so you need to be able to assess how you leverage various systems in your business context to make strategic decisions. So think about this as how do I how do I look at the bigger picture and what are the levers that I can pull in order to, to um, navigate the bigger picture to achieve our longer term goals. So when I think about systems thinking, um, I I just want to like, you know, I just want to like acknowledge like everything that we deal with is a system in some way. Um, I was reminded of this recently when I was reading a DevOps book about, um, you know, comparing an, an engineering department to a you know, physical manufacturing factory. Uh, like, for example, they would compare continuous delivery to reducing bottlenecks for um, backlog batches on a factory floor, um, right? It's like very, very different. They look very different when you look at, you know, a bunch of engineers sitting around desks versus factory workers. But at the end of the day, the way that you navigate these problems can be very similar. Um, and I feel like a lot of technical folks might scoff at this comparison at first blush, but it's really true. Our departments are just another system governed by the same principles of efficiency as we aim to achieve whatever our desired outputs are. So this is true when I compare software systems to people systems. I think of software architecture design the same as organizational design and vice versa. Um, when I think about software services interfacing, you can imagine how people would efficiently communicate and vice versa. 
um, system designer, organization designer, also tied to the hip, you know, as mused upon by Conway's law. So once you start picking apart the patterns of efficient systems, you can break down almost any problem in a similar way to find the solution. So I'm going to show you the, the simplest version of a system. So here we have inputs processing through your system and outputs. Perhaps in some cases, there are physical inputs um, and outputs. Uh, maybe in other cases, uh, the system is producing software. The inputs could be things like financing, humans, development tooling. Um, outputs could be a specific feature goal that you're trying to achieve. Um, so you might be a decision maker and implement or an implementer um, that can control inputs, processing, or outputs in the system. Additionally, most roles, um, probably including you, I think every single person can uh, take a part in this part of the process. Um, you might have the ability to at least identify and surface constraints and catalysts. Um, another way of looking at catalysts could be remediation to constraints. So how do we make things move faster? How do we re reduce risks? Um, think of these as opposing forces that can be applied at any point in the system. So a constraint could be how many staff you have. A catalyst could be automated testing, uh, could be implemented to avoid disruptive issues going into production. So a constant in most systems also, um, a constant uh, and a constraint sometimes can be time. Um, so I've listed that here at the bottom. Uh, so ideally, whatever decision you are making or influencing should make the system more efficient. Um, to ensure that you're getting the right outputs. Um, this could be some kind of impact product meeting a demand by a certain time. Um, this might feel obvious, so you might be bored by this diagram, but problems can be broken down in this way at all times and are a key part of strategic thinking. Okay, so now that we have some foundational concepts, um, what do we need to understand about a system, um, and what are the what are the systems uh, so we can get started with strategic thinking? So I'm going to go through um, six different uh, six different things that I think you should get to know, whether they are um, you know backgrounds and basic business skills that you need to research um, and then understand what they are at your company, or if they're just things you need to find out about um, your, your business problems. Uh, these are the things that I'd suggest getting, um, getting educated on before you go down your strategic thinking journey. First one is money. Um, we hate to think about money, but money is super important, uh, especially in business. Um, even if this isn't something you're making decisions around on a day-to-day -day basis, this does has, have a major impact on, uh, on what kind of strategy you can pursue. So I strongly recommend getting educated in finance basics and understanding levers in your organization for things like raising capital and raising revenue. Um, I get an understanding of return on investment. Uh, make sure you understand uh, what that looks like. Um, also known as ROI. Um, I'd recommend learning about components of financial statements and what yours look like. Um, do you have a good understanding of COGS and OPEX? And how much budget does your department have? What is money actually being spent on? Um, these might not always be super relevant to your day-to-day -day decisions that you're making, but they have a huge impact on what could be possible in decisions that you might be making even at lower levels. Um, next system I'd recommend getting to understand is the system of people. Um, mot how do you motivate people? What motivates your peers? Uh, how do you communicate effectively? How do you get people to connect so you have a cohesive team marching in the same direction? What skills um, and knowledge do you have on hand to use at your disposal? Or maybe what deficiencies in those areas do you have? Um, these are good things to assess so you can understand where your constraints lie in terms of people. Um, and then additionally, we've got time management. So, you know, time I mentioned is a constraint and a constant. So where does time go? How do you do important things more efficiently? What blocks or disrupts work? Um, you need to have a good understanding of this so you can understand uh, where opportunities might lie and where risks might lie. Great. Um, so the remaining three here uh, that you should know. So goals. This one might be one of the most important ones of all of these. Um, if you don't know anything, I'd at least recommend knowing this. We went through mission, vision, and strategy. Could you recite those by heart? If not, that might be problematic. Those need to be super front of mind um, for when you're uh, making decisions um, on a day-to-day -day basis. 
And then additionally, what are your success metrics? So these might have different names, different organizations. Common ones are OKRs, KPIs. Um, OKR stands for Objective Key Results, KPI, Key Performance Indicator. These are like actually measurable things that are indicators of success. So what you are working on, decision that you're making, or is it actually going to further you along your path to achieving these? Um, in the system, in the systems diagram, this would have been your output would be achieving one of these OKRs or KPIs. Um, the next one is power. Um, this one is one that we, another one we hate to think about, uh, but is also very important when we think about systems because uh, we need to be able to influence the systems and sometimes those systems are power networks. So um, do you understand how decisions are made and by whom and who carries the power and influence with those decision makers? And the last one, kind of tying it back to the system as well, constraints. So do you understand what resources you have? Resources, I'm using this term very broadly, right? Could be people, could be money, um, et cetera. Time, um, you know, are you constrained by time for some reason or another? Often we are because we work in competitive markets. Um, values, this one I don't think people usually view as a constraint, but it actually is one. It means another thing that we're trying to hold true to. Um, and then requirements. Uh, so this could really be anything, uh, just something that, we, that we've set out saying, hey, this is a requirement that we need to meet. Uh, for example, in my industry, this could be like uh, making sure that we're keeping patient safety in mind um, when we're developing uh, products or making sure we're not out of compliance with healthcare regulations. So those are the things that I would recommend knowing or at least finding out. So what don't you need to know? What are the things that actually are holding us back um, that we should let go of? Um, so while collecting some of this background knowledge and business context is important, questions are way more powerful than knowledge when engaging in strategic thinking. Often great executors get bogged down when prioritizing knowing the answer to every question and feeling the need to be an expert to have an opinion. Um, so just, let that go. You don't need to be an expert in anything in order to engage in strategic thinking. You just need to know what order the right questions to ask. So a strategic thinker creates way more space for emphasis on strategy by digging into what is the minimum you need to know, the minimum, to ensure that there's a clear direction, feasibility relative to your goals. Um, so in order to practice this, um, I would recommend um, letting bottoms up learning go and trying top-down immersion. So what does this mean? So when you're trying to learn something or, or assess a problem or situation, start by thinking about the broader business context first, not starting with what are the facts at the bottom. So start with the broader business context and then assess what systems exist to support it. What are the constraints and catalysts to be aware of? Um, then keep going deeper and deeper and deeper to, to make sure that you have understood and can solve the business problem. So this will hone your skills in breaking down the problem into component parts and not rely on perfect knowledge to make strategic decisions. For example, um, uh, and, and in case you haven't noticed this already, I'm going to use a lot of like kind of an engineering oriented examples. So if this doesn't resonate with you, you know, kind of try to think of an analogous one. But, um, you know, rather than reading all of the code in a code base, to understand how it works, learn about the business and then the systems, and then ask the right questions that are just relevant to the problem you're trying to solve until you have enough understanding to make sure you're on the right path. Um, so last one on here, not every problem should be solved. So one thing that I think bogs us down, especially if we are fantastic, hyper accountable executors, and we're like, this thing's popped up my queue. I heard a lot of people mentioning, um, you know, like I get bogged down with fires and da, 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 da. Like, um, you know, we have a few tactics for how to maybe uh, navigate that coming later in the presentation. But one thing to know is not every problem in front of you needs to be solved. Sometimes we have to let the smaller problems burn to the ground so we can focus on the bigger problems that are actually higher priority and might actually get us further ahead or maybe even help us avoid those problems that are coming up and blocking our cues. Um, so the most important uh, the most important problem in your immediate purview might not be the most important problem for the business. So prioritizing strategic thinking can help you quickly prioritize what problems you need to solve by focusing on where you're going rather than focusing on where you're at.
<clears throat> so I've said a few times that, you know, questions are key. I'm going to rephrase it. Questions are the key. Um, so we need to get better at asking uh, questions to really understand what matters. So being great at asking the right questions, not knowing all the answers up front is how you master strategic thinking. So there is a, a Chinese proverb. I just, I just think it's great. Um, he who asks a question is a fool for five minutes. He who does not ask a question remains a fool forever. Um, what I'd argue is uh, and suggest is we should all be fools with managed foolishness. Like I, there is no shame in asking a great question. That is, that is a sign of mastery. Um, I think often we are fearful that we're going to look stupid or something like that, but that's actually how we get to better solutions is by asking. Um, and this also gives us permission to not know. Um, so strongly recommend just holding this close and knowing that this was actually a key to your success, not your downfall, as scary as it might seem. All right, so let's go through some questions. So what are these questions that we should be asking? Um, so this next section is going to go into that. First off, you know, we start with that big picture, right? Um, we started with that at the beginning of the presentation. Uh, you need to be able to assess the big picture direction. What are we doing? Where are we go needs to evolve into where are we going? Um, how does what I'm doing now connect or conflict with what we want to do? Um, so a lot of the clues to the answer to these questions are not actually that hard to find. Um, they're going to be within your mission, your visions, your, your vision, your OKRs. Um, so be sure to investigate what some of these things are, because this is this is the top level. This is the top of mind. You need to know this by heart, be able to recite this and know that everything you're doing is laddering up to um, these things. And I, I feel very big, big picture inspired with uh, one of these images from the new web telescope. So enjoy. All right. Uh, next up, um, the next most important, that optimization and success metrics. So you need to have an understanding of what you're aiming for. So this is getting more into the strategy side of things. Um, what are you aiming for? What are you optimizing for? Um, people that have worked with me, I know there's some people that are on the call that I have. I, I often ask this question, like, what are we optimizing for? You can literally like make a list. Um, but uh, also like, what are your success metrics? So how are you measuring success? Um, it's one thing to know what where we're aiming for, but how do we know if what we're doing is actually moving the needle to get us there? So perhaps there's a company, uh, you know, you, you, I, so perhaps there are imperative company-wide initiatives, um, you know, that match your hypergrowth phase, um, or perhaps you're in a belt tightening phase and you're doing cost reduction due to an economic recession. I'm sure no one here can relate to that. Um, so yeah, ask questions that I think really get at like what's going on around me. Um, are we trying to maximize revenue? Are we aiming for profitability? And, and that's a big thing, in which case maximizing revenue and reducing costs is important. Um, are we in a like super marketed competitive scenario where it's all about speed and expansion? Um, or are we just trying to survive? Uh, these are all things to really try to get an understanding of because they might influence uh, you know, components of your decisions and component and also the climate of decision making within your company. Um, so yeah, I'd say evaluate business dynamics and leverage what people have already put together, such as company values, strategy, OKRs, and KPIs to assess some of these things. Okay, so we're going to uh, provide a few lenses of evaluation over the next handful of slides. So I want you to focus on your area of influence. So think about, you know, what can I influence? Maybe that's your team. Maybe that's a particular domain. Maybe that's an entire uh, department or company. Um, so this might be defined differently for all of us, but think about your domain and dis dissect where to focus your energy. I will go through a few different lenses of evaluation that have helped me throughout the years. Uh, so to start, this one is a classic. Um, this is called a SWOT analysis. Um, usually this is plotted on like a graph. Um, so SWOT analysis, so that stands for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. 
Um, so this can be applied to smaller domains, not just big corporate swings, even though this is um, a corporate strategy sort of analysis. Uh, for example, perhaps one of my threats is a, of a security attack that can ruin my company's reputation and cause us to lose customers. Maybe that's something I want to optimize for in the design of a feature that I'm implementing. Perhaps I see a market opportunity that would result in additional upsell revenue to meet a market need, and it just takes one week to implement it. Um, so think about how you can apply this to your problem space to identify what are some strategic wins um, that we that would maybe move us along and uh, along our um, path to success and make us more efficient. Another lens for evaluation, um, and of course, I focus on engineering. So this one's written in a bit of an engineering oriented way, but um, this is another way I can determine opportunities for investment. This one can sometimes call, be called the four P's. Uh, people, platform, process, and product. If this doesn't fit with your domain, you can replace product with like strategic outputs. What are we trying to really produce and build here? Um, another one, uh, platform, maybe that's just foundational tools, the things you use to actually um, have your strategy carried out. Um, could be could be tooling, could be many different things. Um, so an example of using this is perhaps you've invested a ton in your platform tools to ensure stability of your product. Yay, that's a strength. Um, good to note, but maybe not in an area of investment. Um, the uh, um, so, but maybe you have a weak process for when there's an incident exacerbating the surface area of risk for your organization and disrupting everyone's work. Um, so this can be an input for focusing on what to invest in. Um, so often, uh, like with these two, I might actually sit down with my team, and you can even suggest this to your manager, suggest this with your team, sit down and brainstorm together, what are some things that might ladder up into these different areas so we can identify opportunities for what we might want to, uh, what we might want to invest in. Some of these things might be obvious pain points, other things might be um, items where you actually need to overlay the business context of where you're trying to go in order to understand where the opportunities lie. So you can't do these um, analyses without understanding those um, the, the business strategy. Okay, so this one's a little bit different, but um, when I actually want to access how impactful investing in something could be, there are common lenses that span ongoing values and goals um, within engineering. So this lens might be more helpful when digging in to assess how much something moves the needle in our most constant areas of focus. So um, I will take a list of investments, possibly sourced from the first two frameworks I shared, and we'll assess how they map to these areas in terms of impact and rank that impact as high, medium, or low. Um, that way I can see what are the most impactful across the most impactful areas uh, that I think is going to move the needle on where I'm trying to go. Um, so this uh, this uh, is helpful in understanding impact, but you do this in advance of understanding what's most feasible. We'll get to feasibility in a second. Um, so you can take your objectives, key results, or KPIs and do a similar exercise to assess what might be the most what might have the most impact based off what you're trying to optimize for. So you could throw this entire thing out and instead say, here's what we're trying to achieve. Here are the levers we're trying to move. High, medium, or low impact across all of those. Is this something worth spending my time on just from a basic prioritization standpoint? Um, so basically figure out what your objectives, values, and what's core to your success um, and create your own framework. Strongly suggest doing that and thinking through that um, as a way to approach pretty much any problem. Okay, um, sad rain, rain cloud time. So uh, with all these evaluation exercises, um, now that we've dreamed up a prioritized list of investments, we need to assess their feasibility and understand why they could be successful or unsuccessful. So sometimes we just need to ask what is wrong or could go wrong. Uh, do you understand what the bigger, biggest problems and blockers are in your space? Maybe those items also need to be added to the potential investment list. So sometimes I'll create a list of questions um, and have my managers evaluate where they're at on common business needs and issues to source where we have weak points. You could do this yourself as well or ask your manager for what they care about. Um, and maybe you can help give them insight into where some problems might lie that, that uh, ladder up to strategy. 
So an example could be, are there areas of the code that no one understands that are black boxy? So I'll sometimes create what I call like a report card um, with red, yellow, green heat maps to understand, you know, severity um, relative to impact and also urgency for remediation. This helps provide additional assessment as to, um, you know, what's most problematic, what's most urgent, um, and, and uh, can also be an input into understanding feasibility. So I can't articulate enough also the importance of doing a good risk assessment for every plan. Um, I think I'm like the queen of risk mitigation for those who've worked with me, um, always talking about it, but I think it's it's the core to pretty much every, every strategic plan. Um, so I'll sometimes have teams do full-on pre-mortems on particular initiatives or roadmaps. So they, as a group, can surface where risks might lie. Um, so pre-mortem just really is a harsh word for what might go wrong and how can we think about that in advance of, um, of actually going forth. And that way it can be part of our plan rather than something that we have to deal with as it comes up. So as a strategic leader, you should be constantly searching for and trying to remediate risks. Um, I'm sure you can really relate to this in pretty much anything that you do, right? If whether you're writing tests uh, for something you're implementing or putting together, um, you know, ways that you can handle, you know, ways you can implement air handling, whatever it is, these are all forms of risk remediation. Okay, but this is really all about you. So um, how do you connect this all back to your sphere of influence? So I listed some questions here that I'll, I'll let you read on your own, but when you think about how this all maps back to you as an individual, none of this matters if you don't create good practices and habits that facilitate this kind of thinking. So here are some questions you can ask yourself to connect all of this thinking um, back to your work. Uh, in this process, uh, brainstorm ways to scale your influence. Some examples of this could be automating a process process to free up more time for strategic thinking or share, literally just sharing guidance with others about where you're going um, as a group. What are you trying to aim for? How are we going to get there? Strategy. So they can also march toward the same goal with more precision, therefore scaling your impact. Um, additionally, find ways to scale solutions themselves by looking for patterns. So looking for patterns could look like finding a common solution to a similar problem you see happening over and over again and you predict will happen in the future. Um, so implementing a solution that works uh, for all of the similar problems and can scale is right going to be a better use of your time and your influence. So look for opportunities where you can really maximize impact, reducing your work over time. So we're getting towards the, the end of our time here. So I'm going to leave us with some tactical parting advice. So really scale yourself take time to figure out how to do this for yourself. Um, make space for strategy. It's, it's not just gonna create itself. Um, we will always find things that need to get done immediately in front of us, no one's bored. Um, so you need to find time to do this and you need to in, build in more time into the work you're doing so you can run through some of these questions, frameworks, et cetera. Um, so take time to stew on, um, to stew on some of these problems uh, and really just think. Um, maybe you carve out time, go on a walk, Sometimes I'll just go on a walk for an hour and think think about all the things going on, and I'll come back with um, with new ideas. Uh, that's more big picture, but um, you know, take time to digest other content outside your normal day to day for edges of information, in, edges of inspiration. Um, so you can sometimes I'll listen to I don't know even like management books, and then I'll come back and I'm like, ooh, we should try this in a different way. This like inspired me to think about this differently. Like that's why those things are important for us to take in and it might help us approach problems in a new way that we weren't thinking about before. Um, but a lot of this is just about calendar grooming. Um, so calendar and, and task grooming, I should say. So take time to groom your accountabilities, um, but I bet you can reduce the time that you spend on other things in a responsible way. Maybe you can actually let some things go. I mentioned not having to solve every problem. Maybe some of them can burn down so you can focus on bigger problems. Like that's something we got to get comfortable with so we can be strategic in our work. Uh, maybe you need to reprioritize your work, or maybe even delegate. Um, I do this all the time. Um, you need to go through and say, okay, can someone else actually be doing this? Is this the most important thing? Is my time actually getting sucked into meetings that aren't adding as much value as if I would have been taking time to think about, you know, it, where we need to be investing our time for um, from a strategy standpoint? 
So can you, can you make more time for yourself? The answer is probably always yes. So the next one, um, I think some people don't invest enough time in this when they're trying to get, uh, when they're trying to influence strategically. So um, I'd say the most challenging yet impactful strategic work often extends upon the confines of our immediate sphere of influence. So ensure that you seed your ideas early and work to get buy-in from decision makers. So it's likely that you'll get a lot of support to take the reins to solve a problem, but you need to first ask for that help and support and do so as early as possible because big changes take time. So sometimes, right, we might be doing work and we see an opportunity, but we're not head of our function or something like that. Like, that's okay. Um, so if you're in one of those situations, um, just make sure that you're um, sharing your ideas, be vocal, speak up early and know that like you need to be a little patient. Um, I think it's something that was always hard for me early in my career is waiting for everyone to catch up with where I'm at. Um, but right, people need to go through the same process um, that you've gone through uh, to get to understand why what you're saying is important and might be a great idea. Okay, and then lastly, just pick the right moments to consider strategy. It's almost in everything that we do. So when you're making decisions, um, how can you tie it back to strategy every time? Um, even if you're implementing code, writing a tech spec, sequencing development, evaluating a vendor, whatever it is, there's always a space to cons consider strategy. Um, and thinking through all those different business systems, what you're trying to do, how you can move, get, achieve your goals more efficiently. Um, there's, this is still strategic thinking, even if we are in the implementation phase. So um, just know if you can exhibit some of those skills and talk talk through your work, show your work, um, you will be recognized as a strategic thinker and your work will be that much more valuable because you understand how it ties back to the broader business context. All right. I know that there were a lot of uh, a lot of questions and, and desires going into this um, for what you wanted to hear about. So I'm now going to move to questions. Um, so the, the baby panda wants to know, uh, what questions do you have? And Inky, if you don't mind, uh, sharing what people have. Yeah. Yeah. Ali, that was great. Um, we have a lot of questions in the chat. Um, a couple here are, how do you manage differing opinions, um, in strategic thinking? Yeah. Oh, it's so tough. Um, so this kind of goes back to the point about buy-in. Um, cause there will be differing opinions and that might arise. I, I, I view that as that often arise from not necessarily people having different goals because right, ideally everyone has similar business goals. They're trying to achieve if, if everything is connected across, um, but they often are optimizing for different things. Um, I, in my opinion, that's usually when differing opinions arise. So, um, I think, the way that I usually like to navigate that is I actually literally have people be direct about what they're optimizing for and what they value um, as a core input to navigating the conversation. Um, and you know, at the end of the day, people might disagree. And so I think having a good disagree and commit culture is good and really having a good understanding of those power networks. So who actually is the decision maker at the end of the day? Um, and I think it's a common fallacy actually that like, decision making is linear like it's like oh it's always clear this person makes a decision usually those decisions are actually held or made by a group of cross functional leaders if they're that important um and so but understanding who might be involved and who actually needs to be involved based off of what what context um you're you're working within uh is important and then just documenting from there so there's no perfect answer uh, to how you navigate it, but I think understanding the dynamics at play is incredibly important so you can get the right answer. And ideally, you know, you do have, you do have, um, uh, you do ha ultimately have someone who can make the call. Uh, I think this can be scary uh, for a lot of people, uh, but um, what I would say is show your work. And I think that's often to a lot of people, especially those of us that are more technical, um, that means like, show me a mathematical proof about why my answer is right. But it's actually more about how do you best show how this connects to the business value and impact? How do you show your work there? Um, and if you've done that, that's pretty much the best you can do. And you spoke a little bit about documenting. Do you, is that what you mean when you say show your work? Yeah. So um, I'm, 
I'm a huge fan of, of decision documents and, and very clearly stating kind of like, here's what, here's the problem, here who are the decision makers, here's who we've consulted in this, and here are the pros and cons, here's what we're trying to do. Um, I think uh, it's a very undervalued step um, because people hate documenting things and they just kind of want an answer quickly. Um, but, uh, right, if you don't have that evidence and asset, people might not make the right decision and they might forget or question it later if it's not clear how that decision was made. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, we only have a couple more minutes, so I'm gonna go through these a little quicker. Um, that last point touched on how do you actually seed um, your seed support for your idea and get other people engaged in the strategic conversations without overstepping? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So a couple things there, uh, definitely leverage your leadership chain. So share ideas with, uh, with your manager, or if there's other forums where people really chew on these decisions and those funnel up to what gets prioritized and worked on, be vocal in those. Um, I think people often uh, shy away from being proactive in those forums, and that really just hurts them in their growth um, and their influence. So I'd recommend if you have a forum and a podium, use it. Um, and, you know, talk to other people who are your, both your peers who might agree with you and can also amplify that opinion, um, or other people that can influence your decision maker. So maybe it's other people, other leaders in your organization, not just your manager. Um, so really like assess those power networks and seed your ideas early and often. Um, and then if, if it's a matter of just getting your, your peers to engage with you, um, you know, I, I would lean on your, your manager as well to maybe create space for some of these more like open forum brainstorming styles of conversation. So it's more comfortable to share your ideas and get input and other people buy into that rather than it feeling like you're just pushing, pushing, pushing. Um, so you really need to have that space already available to you, right? And that be part of your culture um, or else this is always going to be challenging to have your voice heard. Amazing. Um, this has been really great. I think uh, the framework that you set up put a, gave a lot of clarity to problems that usually feel very overwhelming. So I appreciate it. Um, so we're at time and I think the next session will be starting soon. But before everyone leaves, um, I invite you to write like certain takeaways that you've had from this session. And um, thank you again, Ali, for walking us through all of those great concepts. Of course. And feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn as well. Um, I'm happy to answer any other questions that you have or talk through a specific scenario. Always happy to meet one-on-one. -on -one.